Hi, uh, my name is Keith Cooper from Northlight Images. This is one of a series of videos I'm doing about basic aspects of printing with this, the Canon Pro 1100. Now the 1100 is the replacement for the Pro 1000. Uh, it's not terribly different, but the inks are slightly different and there's a few other minor changes on it. Now, I'm going to be doing a, a full review of this, but I'm just doing these sh videos showing specific instances of how to do a print. And this time I'm going to print a black and white print and I'm going to print it on a rag type paper. Now this is a Canon paper. I've not tested this one precisely with this printer, uh, so it should work, it's a Canon paper. But normally for colour use I would create ICC profiles. Now, those, the ICC profiles I make for this, I'll make available when I do the review, and um, they'll be available on request. But for black and white, the best print mode that I've usually come across on this is not to use a color profile, but to use the black and white print mode. And the black and white print mode is what makes the real difference on this. Now, um, I'm going to print it from the Mac Pro here, uh, Mac, MacBook Pro, I should say, um, and I'm going to use the Canon PPL software. Now, the Canon PPL software works very well, and I'll show how you would adapt it to any other sort of paper and how you could fine-tune it. Now, I'll be doing more detail about this in due course, showing more about adapting it, but this is just the basic print. Now, the printer has had to be moved forward because I've opened up at the back here the rear feed. Now the rear feed, I don't use it normally unless I have to, but the paper that it wants here um, that I'm going to use, if you use that media setting, it only lets you put it in the back. So anyway, I've moved the printer forward a bit and I'm going to load this sheet up. Now, quick tip paper like this looks the same on both sides. If you're unsure of what the print side is, lightly moisten your finger and just touch a corner and you'll feel one side is slightly tacky, one sli side isn't. Um, it's a great way of telling which is the right side to print on papers because you can't always be sure. Certainly once I've opened a pack and I've had the pack of this paper for quite some time, it could have been turned up. So I have no idea of knowing which side is which when they look quite close like this. But anyway, I'm, I've opened the back slot and I'm just going to drop the paper in there, push it through until it registers. Uh, you don't need to push it hard through. It registers on the screen here and I have to select the paper type and the paper size. Now, I will select it on here. I do it both here and on the printing software. Belt and braces, I know, but it saved me over the years an awful lot of selecting the wrong paper. Anyway, let's just rejig this one so it actually appears on the screen again. There we go. These dialogues disappear if you don't deal with them. So size, it's currently A4. I want to take it to A3 plus or 13 inch by 19 inch. Uh, the paper is not pro platinum. I go to this and I just have to go through the list here. Now it is possible to install custom papers on here and I will be covering custom papers elsewhere. But that's not, if you're just doing a basic print like this, you don't need to know that. You just need to find the paper here. And I go down, I go onto it. We've got light photo paper, heavy photo paper, photo paper, long form, Baraita, fine art smooth, fine art rough. Now, I think fine art smooth is this one. Now, bear in mind that paper names, even Canon paper names, have changed over the time, over the uh, years. So if you've got a paper that you've had for a few years, it might not have quite the same name on here. Uh, normally you'll find something similar, um, but obviously I'll discuss this more when I talk about profiling this and general color management and paper handling. But here we are, we've got Fine Art Smooth, I'll select that. So I now have A3+, Plus, Fine Art Smooth, and the Detect Paper Setting Mismatch is enabled and that's just to make sure I don't put the wrong paper in. It's easy to do. Now I know you know some people don't like this, it's a hassle doing it. If you always print on the same paper, no problem. 
Well, that disappeared, that dialog box. We'll see whether it's actually been registered or anything. Right. Um, yeah, having the dialog boxes just disappear like this, I can see why you might do it. But let me just pop this back in. I don't want to waste a sheet, but no, it hasn't remembered it. Um, so, you know, talking to camera and doing something else, I've got to go back through this. I'm going to set that back to A3+. No, I don't want Pro Platinum. I need to go down here to Fine Art Smooth and this time register on here and do that. Setting the following, it's registered. Well, that was a bit of a faff. Um, take note of things like this because when it happens very often, it gets annoying. Uh, I've almost got past not accident, this not being a touch screen and going things and just that there are enough fingerprints on it. I can see times where I have tried to activate the non-existent touch screen. But anyway, to the laptop where I've got a file loaded. Now, the image I've loaded here is a print I've used, I've produced in all sorts of sizes and things. These are the steps at the Chapter House at Wells Cathedral. And um, it's based on a photograph taken by F.H. Evans, 1908, if I remember rightly, sometime around then. Um, a, quite a famous architectural photograph. But this one was taken a few years ago, handheld, I should add, using a Canon TSE 17 tilt shift lens. Um, so it's the same view that Evans would have seen, but he didn't have the equivalent, you know, a 17 mil lens. He, so his field of view is much less. So he concentrates just on the steps and the route up to the distant doorway. But anyway, I've set it here. Um, I haven't got any stored settings on this. Um, I've selected the printer and layout modes, just a single image. Now, I've set media type to fine art smooth, paper size is set. I don't want borderless. Manual feed tray is selected for the paper source. And you'll find that if you select the paper, sometimes when you select the paper, it automatically changes the feed slot as a hint to you that you can't use it. Print quality, I'm just going to do this high because I've got all day to wait around for a, a very high and there's not much difference. Clear coating, it says auto, but the clear coating isn't, I believe, actually used on this paper. So if I go down from that, I can find the layout options. I've just changed it where it says left and right here, the margins. I've just moved them to size the picture approximately on the paper. Now, there are more accurate ways of doing this when you, with these numbers, but you'll have to read the uh, manual for this. Uh, and you do get an option to have a look at the manual when you first fire up the software. Now, it says maintain aspect ratio. I don't, want, I don't want to crop it or anything like that. I just want the print to fit in this space. If you look at the color mode at the bottom, color management, it says black and white photo. Now, I know underneath that it says printer profile auto, but if I click on it, nothing happens as with rendering intent because effectively there is no ICC color map. There is no profile being used. Likewise, if I try and click on the soft proofing option, underneath the picture. Nothing happens there because it's black and white mode. Now I will just show you, although you don't need to necessarily to change these, the color settings and this you'll see the sort of don't bother altering the brightness and contrast here. You should get that right when editing your picture, not here. Now I've left it at default hard tone. Um, it, that's what it defaults to. Unless you have a good reason for changing the strength, leave it at that. But when it says tone, you'll see a panel underneath with very faint colors. What you can actually do is move that to add in a slight toning adjustment to compensate for any residual color in the print. Now, I'm going to assume this is bang on neutral. It might not be. In fact, experience tells me with Canon inks, having used them over the years for black and white, that I might well, for optimal results, need to dial in a small adjustment there. But once again, that's something I'll come back to when I actually do some proper black and white testing with uh, you know, proper measurements and things. This is just a simple print. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see there's a curve adjustment there, straight line. Um, you can actually load adjustment curves. Now, this is a part of the software that has been around for years and it is woefully underused, in my opinion, by Canon. 
it would be so much easier to add uh, an adjustment curve for this particular paper. So I haven't tested this paper on here, so I don't know whether there's any tendency to crunch blacks or open up the shadows a bit too much. I'm just going to um, take it as is, as a basic print here. But this is where you can add in all sorts of adjustments. Unfortunately, it's just not supported very well. So that's the colour settings, which we don't really need to touch those. Um, I can, of course, do a pattern print right at the bottom here. And if I do that, I get an option to print all those minor adjustments. So what you've got here is a whole load of copies of the image, each with a very slight adjustment to tone. And what you can do is you can print that and then you can look at it and you think, well, actually, I think that a, an adjustment of plus five or something like that will make all the difference. That's what I want for the tone. Um, it's sounds easy it's actually harder than you think to be sure of which one is optimal and when looking at a picture like this i find it much easier to have a larger sheet of just plain paper with a hole cut out in it the size of the image so i can just make a little window over the images and just look at them rather than be influenced by all the others on the page uh, just a sort of a little usability tip there. Anyway, I've got this. Incidentally, this is a TIFF file that I've loaded. It's a 16-bit, but it's an RGB TIFF file. Since uh, Canon's PPL software still, hint, hint, has a bug in that it cannot accept black and white images. You put a black and white grayscale image onto it and it won't load. So this is an RGB image. It's in... Uh, it's in sRGB, I've had, no sorry, it, in Adobe 98, let's get it right, which is a gamma 2.2 space, so you can convert your black and white files to an RGB file. It, I say RGB, it's just R equals G equals B, so it's grayscale, but it's a bigger file. Uh, you have to do that to get it to load. Um, I don't know what Canon has got against grayscale uh, JPEGs and TIFFs, but uh, they won't let you print them. But anyway, I'm just gonna press the print button on the bottom here. And it says, it warns me that the selected paper size does not have wide margins. If I continue printing with the current settings, problems such as paper abrasion may cause paper stains or deterioration of paper. This warning you get all the time with art papers and margins. Um, you know, it's been doing this. It, in fact, if I go back to when I tested the Canon Pro 1 and the Pro 10, my biggest complaint about them and printers before that uh, was the enforced margins on art papers. Um, you, it is just an annoyance. It's why, in my opinion, the Pro 300 was so much better from a usability point of view than the Pro 10. Um, the 300 uses the same print head, similar inks, but it's vastly more usable. And we get this warning here. I'm just going to go, OK, we're not going to. We'll have a look at the print when it comes out. Um, I get some details telling me about the settings of the print, but uh, we'll just go, OK. And we've now got, it's going to start talking to the printer shortly. It says it's now sending to the printer. Printing will start, a message has popped up here. Uh, printing will start from the manual feed tray, load a sheet of paper in the manual feed tray. So you didn't need to load it at the start there. You can't stack, by the way. On the top slot here, you can stack a few sheets. Even at A2 size, you can put a few sheets onto it. So I'm just gonna go start print, processing. Please wait momentarily. If there is one continual annoyance I have with Canon printers, it is the use of the word momentarily. Please wait momentarily. It's like a really nasty call center. Um, no, just a personal gripe of mine. Anyway, it's making lots of whirring noises as they do. Uh, I will shorten this sequence because I'm going to video the entire bit of paper just coming out here. But we'll just wait and see what happens. It's also, this printer happens to be, because it was shipped and uh, the inks need to be uh, prepared for shipping, it's very low on ink. So I'm giving this print, this print job about a 50-50 chance of failing midway through running out of ink. But 
it's not warning me, it's not saying there's not enough ink to do the print. So, fingers crossed, maybe my 50-50 was a bit pessimistic. We shall see. Ah, more whirring starts up. Uh, this has a vacuum paper hold system that draws air in underneath the paper as it goes through. So the vacuum system holds the paper flat. That said, it still doesn't like paper curls. So if you put paper into a printer like this and the edges are curled up, you are asking for problems with print, with the print head hitting it. Well, that just something happened there, so it just moved in. Uh, it says printing. It, it gives a totally meaningless number up here as the name of the print job. Why it can't give me the name of the file that is printing. And I say that just as a double check. So, I mean, obviously I've got the print, you know, the computer sitting just here so I can look at it and I know I've got the right picture. I know everything's right. Let's say I'm printing two similar versions of a file. It would be very nice if rather than PPL dash and then about 202, oh, it's a date. Uh, there's a date and a very, and, it would be nice if this displayed something meaningful. It doesn't. That means if this was upstairs and I was here, this might come and I might try and second guess myself and go, oh, is, is that the right file? If it just had the file name, it would be so much better. These are, these are minor quibbles, but in... Years ago, I, my, I had a career in usability research and human factors and stuff like that before I took up photography. In fact, it was doing some consultancy in that field, which paid for me to give it up and take up doing professionally, uh, photography professionally. So, uh, but it means that usability things stick uh, and hence my annoyance with momentarily and other things like that and the fact that it doesn't display the name at the top here. Stuff like this, how important is it? You could say it's not that important because the software works. Um, however, a key part of design to me is minimizing annoyance of users. Now I have in the past when I was a software developer, even longer ago, uh, designed aspects of software specifically as an annoyance to uh, users, but that's another matter. Um, the print's coming out quite a reasonable speed. It's not fast as the printers. Now I'm printing this on high quality rather than highest. Uh, would I notice any difference between high and highest? Um, I wouldn't, not with these glasses on, these are my just sort of relatively close glasses. My close-up eyesight is not that good. Uh, so hence why I don't use a phone very often because my arms are simply not long enough and if they were, the phone isn't big enough. So this looks fine. It's an image I know well. Um, if you are printing a new print on a new printer, um, I'll put links to the test images in the reviews and things like that, but always start out with a known test image. So if you're printing color, I've got a color known test image. I've got black and white test images. Now these are all freely downloadable from the North Light Images site. I use them because I know what they are. If you're printing an image of your own, then you can never be entirely certain that anything you see wrong with it is not your fault. That's why I don't use my own images as initial test images. Well, apart from the black and white one, which I created specially. But for colour images in particular, I always use the same image. I've done loads of videos about using test images and things like that, um, and why you would use them, and how you can use them. The test images can help your printing. They can also help your editing. But I say, just have a look in the videos. Incidentally, if you're new to my videos, there are well over 600 of them since I started doing this a few years ago. Um, YouTube is pretty useless at indexing things. There is an index page on the Northlight Images site, which is a categorized index of every single video I've done. So if you're looking for something and wondering whether I've done a video of it, have a look at the index page on the Northlight Images website, because for curating cons content, YouTube is pretty useless. Anyway, how's this looking? Well, it's even. 
There are no marks on it, um, which is good, really. And this paper, by the way, it is a relatively lightweight paper. This is 188 grams cotton rag paper. Now, that's a very light one for a cotton rag paper, and is, I would normally choose something thicker. Certainly, if you're going to sell prints, I would choose a slightly thicker paper. Um, because people might not think they do, but people take notice of quality. Now, if you're selling it online, it doesn't make any difference. But if you're selling prints where people can, and I've got examples people can pick up and feel. Um, I know it sounds wrong, but if you give somebody a nice thick print on thick, heavy paper, they will perceive quality as higher, irrespective of what the picture looks like. But anyway, enough marketing. Oh, I've got lots of, um, I've got lots of videos on photography marketing and print marketing and things as well, if you're curious. But um, I say this because the, the channel's grown quite a bit, and so people might not have seen some of my older stuff. But anyway, here we have the image. And I'm going to try and get this so you see there's no great reflections on it because it's a matte paper. It's looking pretty good. Now, because of the nature of the lighting here, I'm doing this test because of the size of this printer I'm down in my kitchen. I've got halogen LED lights here. I've got a light over here, which I use for my videos. But we do have, you know, it's a bit unpredictable. And whilst I can hope that will look good on the video, um, I can't really guarantee whether it'll have a colour tinge. For me, looking at it in this light, well, it looks pretty neutral. Um, that is a good version of this print. Um, I've used this image you know, several times for, for testing and that. And I do have um, a, an edition of prints of it on Hanamula metallic paper, which is a, an interesting paper. I've got a roll of it and I may well try cutting some roll paper samples, both to try long prints on this and also some different papers because I don't have sheets of everything. Now, I've got quite a lot of A2 sheets of art papers and things, but um, there you go. That is the nice, simple and quick way to print a black and white fine art print. Definitions of fine art are, as ever, open to interpretation. I use it purely as a marketing term. I'm sure some people have much deeper meanings. I don't. But anyway, if you've got any questions, let me know. I'll be having more of these videos. Uh, main review will probably be a good few weeks yet because I've got to do lots of individual testing before I'll do that. But there you go. How to do a black and white print. And that's it, really. So uh, thanks for watching and bye.